little there. Feeling any better? Oh, I'm feeling fine now. Thank you. That's great. I thought they turned you loose an hour ago. The warden said I could say goodbye to Mary. He gave me a pass. Sounded himself. Okay, but take it easy. She's growing worse every day. Don't talk too much. Hello. I'm leaving. Yeah, I'm so glad for you, Betty. They said you could use some sunshine. I'll be all right. I heard you could get out of here if you'd ask for a pardon. I'd rather finish it out here. Is it... Is it because you've got no place to go? No. Because if it is, I could get a place for you. You could come with me. I could take care of you. I'd like that. That's very kind of you, Betty. You know, you, you'd make a good mother for me. You've been one to me ever since I came here. I like to hear you say that. You'd make a good daughter, too, Betty. <laughs> Betty, have you got a mother? Well, I never knew her. But I got a husband. He's waiting at home for me to come back. And if it's money you need, he'll dig up any price it takes. Thanks, Betty. But it's too late to help me. Isn't there something I can do for you? Just don't do anything that will send you back here. Promise? I promise. Remember, I have faith in you. Oh, isn't there something I can do for you? Anybody you want me to see? Anything you want me to tell them? Mary, there is something. What is it? Yes, you can do something. Reach under my pillow and get that envelope. I've lived very long, and this is something I don't want to leave here. I trust you with them. The pictures of my daughter. She was born in here. I never saw her after they took her away. I never had any of the things a mother looks forward to. I never saw her first pair of shoes. When she spoke her first word, someone else heard it. She never called me mother. She doesn't know I am her mother. Don't ever let her know. Special delivery letter from Miss Margaret Wilson. I'm Margaret Wilson. Sign here. unusual about that. We've been getting four or five on every boat. This was special delivery. Oh, why'd you say so? What is the special news? Anything wrong? What's he say? He says he loves me. That's not news. What else did he say? These three years away from you have seemed a lifetime. He said that in every letter. This will be my last letter to you. Oh, listen. He's coming home. His boat arrived in New York yesterday. And his train gets in this afternoon at 2.30. Well, that's in less than an hour. Oh, I'll have to dress. Oh, Mother, will you ask him for dinner? And will you bake him a special pie? And Dad, will you back the car out for me? You bet I will. And now comes the hardest part of our job. Well, I think it's the grandest part. She's a very lucky girl to marry Robert. He's a fine young doctor. And Margaret will be wanting that honeymoon abroad. Why not? She's dreamed of it for years. Yes, but that calls for a passport. What's so difficult about that? Well, she has to have a birth certificate. Then they'll have to know who her mother is. Yes, and where she was born. She must never know that. Don't you think we ought to tell Robert before they are married? Henry, don't you dare think of it. We've kept that a secret all her life. This is no time to tell it. Well, supposing her mother comes out of prison and wants to see her daughter. How can Mary Winters get out of prison? She's in there for life. They're trying to get her out now. How do you know? 
Henry, you're keeping something from me. Out with it. What is it? I had a long-distance phone call this morning from the prison warden. What about? He wants me to come up to the prison and see Mary Winters. He says if she isn't released soon, uh, she can't live much longer. What are you going to do about it? I don't know. I told him I'd talk it over with you. Upstairs. Who is it, Henry? Uh, there's somebody asking for Margaret. Margaret? What is it, Dad? Someone down here to see you. Who is it? Somebody uh, wants to talk to you about young Dr. Benson. Well, tell them I'll be right down. Who is it? Just a young fellow from down the street. Why don't you bring him in? Hello. <laughs> Robert! <laughs> Darling, don't look now, but the person outside with Margaret is the gentleman she's going to marry. Robert? How on earth can that be? She was to meet him at the train. He just sprung a surprise on her. Let them alone a minute. We'll find out all about it. Mother, Dad, it's Robert. Robert, I'm so glad to see you. How are you, Mother Wilson? Uh, tell me, how did you get here ahead of the train? Oh, the train wasn't fast enough for me. The minute I got off the boat, I took a plane. I went over home and then rushed over here. After three years, she looks better than ever. Now would be a good time for you to go down to the store and get those potatoes. I brought them home this morning. Well, if you won't take a hint, come on out with me and help peel them. <laughs> This surprise of yours made my heart do a flip-flop. It's beating like a threshing machine. Oh, that's a sign of heart trouble. You better sit down. You look into this. How long has your heart been beating? Well, I first noticed it in my cradle, more than 20 years ago. Has it ever stopped beating? Yes, once. About six years ago, the first time you asked me to dance. <laughs> it was seven years ago, my first year out of medical school. That's right, Doctor. But it never beat this fast before. That's what I thought. What you need is a new last name. <laughs> Can I get that prescription filled at a drugstore by an apothecary? Oh, uh, no. It has to be filled in a church by a minister. And then I prescribe a long trip, a honeymoon. And I'll have to look after your case personally. Oh, boy, it feels good to be streamlined again. How do you like me, sweetheart? Come and get me. Oh, wearing those prison duds for 18 months got me down. I was beginning to worry whether you'd want me back. Honey, I've been counting the hours till you'd come back to me. Okay, that's all I wanted to hear. Now everything's perfect. Oh, nothing gives a girl as much confidence as silk. You'll have plenty of silk and satins and furs and diamonds with our setup. Setup? Yeah. While you've been away, I've been lining up a couple of sweet jobs. Now it's as easy as shooting fish. Yeah, the same kind of fish we didn't shoot on that last job. Well, uh, we won't let that happen again. No, you're right. We won't. At least I won't. I'm all through with that business. Say, what's getting into you? You getting religion or something? No, I'm not getting religion and I'm not kidding. We're all through grabbing at easy money. Just how do you figure we're going to get all them fancy clothes and soft living there? Work for it. But, look, honey, what's happened to you? Have you gone soft? No, but I'm not going to do anything that's going to send me back to finish out that old term. Nor start a new one. You'll get over that. Why everybody's like this when they first come out? You are the best in the business. What you need is a little vacation. No, thanks. I just had a vacation. All right, sweetheart. I know you've been packed away in a can. Take your time. I won't rush you. But I still think that a little vacation with me is just what you need. You know, uh, sort of a second honeymoon. Would you like that? Sure I would. Who wouldn't? Okay, sweetheart. It's all set. We'll pull out of here tonight and take a trip to Florida for a couple of weeks. Hey. What's this? Let that alone. That doesn't belong to you. Give it to me. Wait a minute. Not so fast. I what is this? I promised her I wouldn't let anybody see it. Yeah, nobody but me. Who'd you promise? What is this? Sit down there. Now tell me what this is and be quick about it. Come on out with it. It's none of your business. 
So you were going to pull a job without me and keep it all for yourself. And me here almost believe in your blow-off. Why, you dirty little double dealer. I had a good mind to knock your ears back. No, you got it all wrong. I wouldn't do that. You know it isn't true. I can't let you have it. It doesn't belong to you. Please give it to Get me. Get away from me. What is this stuff? It doesn't belong to me. I'm keeping it for somebody. Yeah? Huh? Then I'll keep it and find out what it is myself. Oh, no, Harry, you can't do that. I promise to take care of it. All right, then tell me what it is. I got him from an old lady in prison. Who's the girl in these pictures? Her daughter. Where does she live? I don't know. I get it. It's a perfect setup. Okay, sweetheart. This puts us back in business again. Listen, Harry. If you do anything to cause that girl trouble, so help me. If it's the last thing I ever do, I'll stop you dead in your tracks. Wait a minute. Don't get too excited. What's this girl mean to you? Nothing. I never laid eyes on her. But her old lady meant everything to me. And whatever you do to that girl, you're doing to me. All right, sweetheart. Pull your socks up. You know I'll do anything you want me to do. Now, what do you say about that little vacation? You know. Another honeymoon? Well, it would cost an awful lot of money. What of it? Well, there's something else I could use that money for. Something a lot more important. What could be more important? That girl's mother died up in prison, just as I was leaving. I promised to bury her. Bury her? Now, what do you want to go and do that for? At the state handler. Not that old lady. Not the way they do it. Two hundred dollars at bury her decent. Outside the walls. That's where she belongs. I never thought anybody could go this soft. Please, Harry. All right, honey. If that's the way you want it. We'll have to get busy now and pick up some easy dough. I told you that was out. You must be off your head thinking of working for money. It's either that way, Harry, or I go it alone. All right, sweetheart, you win if you're that set on it. It's going to be pretty tough for me to get a job in this town. My record's hot here. Well, we don't have to stay in this town. We can go someplace else and start clean. Well, that's something to think about. A place where nobody can know us. Why, it's a great idea. Say, we better get out of here now before anybody knows that you're back. Well, where will we go? i got to report to the parole officer every so often. Well, that's easy. We don't have to go way too far for that. What do you say we just get in the car and start moving until we find just the right town? I knew I could count on you, Harry. I'll start packing. Betty, what is it? Oh, I've just had the most glorious time. Yeah, what doing? Nothing in particular, just walking around the town. Oh, it feels good to be free again. Even the cop on the corner saluted me as if I was somebody. I hope we can get work. I'd like to stay here. Uh, certainly you can stay here, honey. I think I've got a job lined up that ought to pay us plenty. You mean work? Sure, work. And lots of it. I'm going to meet him now. I'll see you later. Good luck to you. Thanks, honey. I'm looking for Margaret Wilson. This is her home, isn't it? Yes, it is. Only she isn't in just now. Well, that's too bad. I have an important message for her. Could you give me the message? I'm Mrs. Wilson, her mother. Is Mr. Wilson home? Yes. I think I'd better talk to him. Well, come in. In here. Henry, here's a gentleman with a message from Margaret. He wants to talk with you. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? I'm Harry Gilbert. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Are you a friend of Margaret's? Well, no, not exactly. But I was a friend of her mother's. I don't remember meeting you. I don't mean you. I mean her real mother, Mary Winters. There must be some mistake. You can't be looking for our Margaret. It uh, must be some other Margaret Wilson. I'm sure I have the right address. I'm looking for the girl whose mother just died in the penitentiary. I guess I'll have to go down to the local newspaper office and see the editor. I'm sure he'll help me find her. He recently printed a picture of her and the young doctor she's going to marry. A doctor, uh, Benson. Robert Benson. Well, I'm sorry that I troubled you. Wait. You can't let him do that. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Gilbert. Maybe we can be of help. 
Well, no, I... I better find the right girl and talk to her. Uh, what did you want to tell her? Well, I don't think I ought to discuss this matter with strangers. I don't think she'd like anyone to know that she was born in the penitentiary and adopted by some very kind people who've shielded her. You can understand how it is. Why, if this thing got out, it might ruin her whole life. If this young doctor found out, he might not even want to marry her. You can talk with us. We're not strangers to her. We're the ones who adopt her. Oh, then I can talk. I must admit that I admire the way you've guarded the secret. She liable to come home? We're expecting her any moment. I hope we can rely on you never to breathe a word of this to anybody. I can understand your reason, but that's certainly difficult on me. You see, I was depending on her to repay me, well, at least part of the expense that I was put to because of her mother. What money could you have spent for a woman in prison? Well, for one thing, my wife and I paid the expenses of having outside of the prison walls. Why, I'll be glad to reimburse you for that amount. How much was it? Well, that in itself was something under uh, $500. There were other matters that went on for years. We had expensive lawyers to try to get her free. Just how much did that cost? Oh, maybe uh, several thousand dollars. Why, we don't have that much money. I didn't expect her to pay all of that. As a matter of fact, if we weren't hard up and my wife in poor health, I wouldn't want a dollar back. I only hope that she'd be able to pay part of it. How much can you let me have? Why, not more than a thousand dollars at the most. Hmm, that would be very helpful right now. It would enable me to get my wife to California. I think you'd better pay it and help him to go. What did you say your name is? Harry Gilbert. Sweetheart, you were right about working for a living. It's easier than I thought. I found an old bird who wants me to advise him on the stock market. You know, I'm, uh, I'm awfully good telling people how to make investments. <laughs> he already paid me for my work today. Oh, Harry, I knew you could do it. And there's plenty more to be made off him. Well, it's about time you got here. I've been trying to reach you everywhere. Don't you ever stay home long enough to answer your phone? I do, except when I have business at the hospital. A patient, so soon? My dear young lady, take a good look at me. Don't you see any difference in me since yesterday? Ooh, only that you're more handsome. Oh, no. This is high-class professional dignity. You are now looking at Dr. Robert J. Benson of the Edgemont Hospital staff of surgeons. Oh, that's the best news I've ever heard. How did it happen? Well, I was sitting in my office waiting for an epidemic to break out. Mumps or measles. Well, even whooping cough, I thought of. And the telephone rang. And what was it? Mumps or measles? Oh, no, it's better than both put together. Mm -hmm. It was Dr. Turner, and he told me that he had never taken me off the staff while I was in Europe. Well, I always knew he had good judgment. Oh, Robert, I'm so happy for you. I thought you'd be glad to hear about it, so I ran right over. But I have to go right back now. He's called a meeting of the whole staff, and it must be something important. Well, you run right over there and don't be a minute late. Yes, my dear. Gentlemen, I ask you to meet with me so that I can announce that this day marks the realization of an ambition I set out to accomplish ten years ago. Dr. Garfield, you were the first to join me ten years ago, and I'm grateful to you for remaining during all this time, despite the many flattering offers you've received to go elsewhere. And Dr. Willard, to you goes my deep appreciation for your splendid work all these years. And Dr. White, you've made a remarkable record as a surgeon. In fact, that record shows that you never lost a patient. And Dr. Benson, I want to pay my respects to you, not only for your ability as a surgeon, but also for the courage you had to leave a lucrative practice and go abroad for three years and study the technique of such masters as Paulding, Conway, Graham, the greatest names in brain surgery. And now, gentlemen, we come to the next thing I want to put before you. I felt for some time that I should be replaced with a better man, a man trained in the modern science of medicine and surgery. Dr. Turner, I, for one, will not listen to such a shocking proposal. Why, we wouldn't think of letting you do that. 
place wouldn't be the same without you. I anticipated such loyalty, and I'm grateful for it. But I've sent my resignation to the board of directors to take effect when they select one of you to succeed me. Well, no one regrets Dr. Turner's retirement more than I. But in deference to his modesty, I urge that we dispense with eulogies for the moment. Let us all meet at my house, say, uh, on Friday night to pay tribute to our retiring chief. Thank Good idea. Thank you, Dr. White. Meeting is adjourned. Dr. Turner, I want to thank you. I, I really appreciate all you've done for me. Dr. Benson, I, uh, I'd like to see you for a moment. All right. Sit down. Robert, I... I wish you had ten more years on your shoulders. I hope to be a much better doctor by the time. Probably the most capable on this staff now. That's quite a compliment coming from you, sir. I'm not paying you a compliment. I'm concerned myself with the problem of making the board of directors see it my way. Are they complaining about my being on the staff? Certainly not. Trouble is, they're not doctors. They place importance only on age and dignity, not youth and skill. And I'm figuring on recommending you to the board of directors as my successor. Oh, but Dr. Turner, the doctors on the staff could resent my being placed over them. They might not remain. And that would destroy everything you've accomplished. I've worried about that, too. It's a big problem. We'll see how it works out. Hello, darling. Hello. I've great news for you. Old Dr. Turner is quitting. Really? Oh, that is good news. Now we have to work fast, so I get the appointment. Will Dr. Turner recommend you for his place? I don't know. We have to put on a real campaign. I started already by asking the staff members to meet here on Friday night. I suppose every one of them wants the job. Yes. But we've got to head them off by lining up the board of directors. They have the power to name the men. The way to reach them is through their wives. I'll handle that by putting on the social pressure. Why, they jump at the chance of coming here. Grand, darling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention for just one moment? I'd like to propose a toast to our honored guest, Dr. Turner. <laughs> Dr. Turner, we shall never find one to take your place in our hearts. To your good health and your good luck. Your good work will be an inspiration to all who follow. Best, that we build some fitting tribute to show our appreciation at the Edgemont Hospital. Mr. Burgess, you are president of the board of directors, and I'd like to propose that the hospital build a new wing to be known as the Dr. Turner Orthopedic Clinic, and the money to be raised by public subscription. To start the ball rolling, Mrs. White and myself We'll be very happy to send you a check for five thousand dollars. <laughs> As this building is to be dedicated to me, may I suggest that it be a clinic for neuropathology, modeled after the Graham Foundation in Europe. There's a young doctor on our staff who has just returned from studying at the Graham Foundation. He knows their method and technique and is the logical man to continue the work in Edgemont. I'm referring to Dr. Robert Benson. We are deeply grateful to Dr. and Mrs. White for their most generous donation. And we are all in accord in accepting Dr. Turner's recommendation. I never realized till now that our hospital staff included a man of the distinction of Dr. Robert Benson. This has turned out to be a campaign for Dr. Benson instead of for me. Break it up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll adjourn to the next room, there'll be music and dancing. Oh, <laughs> I'm proud of you. Were you able to persuade Dr. White to operate on Mrs. Hunter? Not a chance. I thought she'd only die on the operating table. 
I'm afraid Dr. White is more interested in saving his record than he is her life. Well, I'm not exactly fair to him, but he did turn me down. He said he was too busy to handle it. Surprising how busy he keeps when he runs the chance of losing a patient. Dr. White has never lost a patient in surgery. If I had a record like that, I'd be proud of it, too. We could all have records like that if we deliberately avoided the hard ones. Perhaps many a poor devil would be alive today if Dr. White had operated instead of letting him die in bed. That's exactly what's going to happen to this patient unless somebody with Dr. White's ability operates immediately. It's right up his alley. Yes, I can see that. I can remember when he stood for everything that's fine in medicine. That was before he married a rich and ambitious woman. Now everything he does has a purpose. This time he's after the chief of staff. Perhaps that's the reason he won't take a chance with Mrs. Hunter. Yes, I know. But as a last resort, I put it up to young Benson. He's examining her now. I don't see what's keeping her alive. She should have been operated on a week ago. I think it's too late? She can't live without surgery. Will you take the chance of operating? I thought that's why you called me. Dr. Benson, do you think you can afford to lose a case right now? When I'm hearing about losing prestige more than saving lives, I don't belong in our profession. How soon can you operate, Doctor? I don't think we should lose a minute. I'll have her prepared for surgery. If you like, I'll assist you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I beg you, Dr. White. Here's the chart you wanted on that appendectomy. Oh, thank you, nurse. I thought you'd be in surgery. No, I have no operation scheduled, have I? I know, but all the others are watching Dr. Benson operate. I understand he's doing an excellent job. Well, who's the patient? Mrs. Hunter. Yeah. Well, I may drop in later. He's almost finished. Oh, hello, Dr. Willard. Been looking for you. Yes, Dr. White, what is it? You know that case of Mrs. Hunter's that you wanted me to take over? Well, I shall be able to operate the first part of the week. That's good of you, Doctor. But you're a little late. Oh, that's too bad. Of course, I warned you that any attempt to operate would prove fatal anyway. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. But she didn't die. Young Benson just operated and quite successfully. Oh, that's lucky for Benson. I'm very glad he got that break. I think it was the patient got the break. Oh, congratulations, Benson. I heard your job turned out quite successfully. Yes, thank you. I guess you'll be all right. Well, I'm very glad you had the courage to attempt it. I've been thinking of having a talk with you ever since you came back. You know I have a large private practice. And if you give up your work here in the hospital, I'd, uh, I'd make you my assistant on the outside. Well, thank you. I, I think I'd prefer to remain here. Well, if you change your mind, let me know. I'll do that. Nice shot. With two hours and 30 minutes practice, it ought to be a nice shot. Two hours and 30? Do you mean to tell me that you spent all that time trying to knock a little ball in a little glass? What time now, dear? Why, well, yes, 4.30. Uh-huh. And what time was I supposed to pick you up to play golf? Why, well, uh-oh. Two o'clock until 4.30 is exactly two hours and 30 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. You know what you'll have to do? You'll have to divorce me first and marry me later. That way you'll use up all your grounds for divorce. Never mind, darling. When we get married, it's for better or worse. I heard you were operating on Mrs. Hunter. Oh, then you understood the delay. You know, I always wondered what Mr. Hunter saw in her. There was only one way to find out. I operated. What did you find? A couple of horseshoes. Oh, well, that ought to bring you luck. It might. It might land me Dr. Turner's position as chief of staff. That wouldn't be so bad. I thought you'd gone to California. So I want to talk to you about it. What are you after this time? I need some more money. You've had all you're going to get. Now go away and leave us alone. 
When I get enough money. Not another penny from us. Okay, Wilson. I'll wait. And talk to the girl. She might want to get it out of that doctor friend of hers. You get out of this house. Nah, quit bluffing. Oh, it's you. So that's the girl. I'd have known her anywhere. She looks just like her picture. Margaret, you go upstairs. I want to talk to this man. Yes, Margaret. Come up with me. Let her stay here. She'll find out about it anyway. You keep quiet. Why should I? I spent a lot of money on her, old lady, and I'm here to get it back. No, not her. Your real mother. You ought to be shot. Well, if they won't tell you, I will. She's not your real mother. She just adopted you when you were born in prison. Your real mother was Mary Winters. She died in prison last week. Well, what is he saying? Is this true? Margaret, will you please go upstairs with your mother? She'll explain. I'll talk with this man. You spoiled your own game. Now get out. Well, it's still a secret with us if you want to keep it that way. If I paid you anything, you'd only keep coming back for more. Not if you paid me enough. How much would you be satisfied with? Five thousand dollars. Why, I couldn't possibly give you that much money. We have very little except our home. This house ought to raise that much. But that would take time. Okay, I'll give you time. I'll be back. Well, Dad, I'm so sorry I brought this on you and Mother. My darling, we won't let anything happen to you. But how can I ever repay you? You've repaid us a thousand times by just being our daughter. I don't feel any other way, except that I am your daughter. You're as much ours as you possibly could be. Did you ever know my, my other mother? We saw her when we adopted you. She was a fine woman, only unfortunate. Oh, I wish I might have known her. There might have been just something I could do to help her. She didn't want it that way. She was happy that you were protected. Of course, we'll have to go to the police and stop this man from blackmailing you. We can't do that. The whole story would come out. Then everybody would know about it. But that wouldn't make any difference to our real friends. What about Robert? Oh, you know he wouldn't let that matter. Of course he wouldn't, dear. But the scandal could ruin his career. Oh, Mother, what am I going to do about marrying Robert? Oh, I can't hurt him. I love him too much. Well, what are you doing here, my sweet? I was just going over to your house. Now we can walk home together. Robert, I want to talk to you. Here. Well, what's on your mind? You look entirely too gorgeous to be troubled by anything. Come on. Tell me what it's all about. This looks serious. What is it? Robert, I feel differently about us. Differently? Why? Oh, I don't know why, but I just don't think I love you enough to, to marry you. When did this strange idea get into your head? You certainly didn't have it this afternoon. Yes, I did, but I just thought it was something that wouldn't last. Come on. Stop lying. Robert, you were away for, for over three years. And, well, I guess we were separated too long. Well, what about all the welcome you gave me when I came home? How about all the plans we've made since? Well, that was just the thrill of seeing you back again, but it didn't last, Robert. Oh, please don't make it any more difficult for me. See here, young lady. Can it be possible? That a man named Harry Gilbert has been talking to you? What do you know about him? So that is it. I paid him off day before yesterday. And he made the mistake of coming around here a little while ago and trying to collect again. Everything he said is true. Think what it would mean to you when people found out. Robert, 
I'll never marry you. Oh, but, my, darling, I... Please don't say any more. Told you I wanted that in bills. How do you think I'm going to get a check that size cashed? I couldn't explain to the bank why I want that much cash. Well, you're going down to the bank with me so we won't have any trouble. I want you to know this is the last dollar I have. It won't do you any good to come back for more. Dad. What are you doing? Are you giving him more money? Now, Margaret, please let me handle this. But you're paying him because of me, and I won't let you. You keep out of this. Be glad that somebody's paying. There's no reason now to pay you anything. Not since Robert knows all about it. Cut out the gab. And give me that check. Don't you dare to, Father. That won't keep him quiet. You call the cops you wish you hadn't. Go see who it is, and don't let anyone in. Oh, Robert, I'm so glad it's you. Oh, I was hoping you'd change your mind. You've got to help me. Dad's giving that man Gilbert more money. I thought I told you to get out of town. I'm not leaving without that check. Okay. I could play that way, too. Now that check won't be big enough. Come on. Dr. White, please. Hello. Hello, Dr. White? Yes, this is Dr. White speaking. My name is Gilbert, Harry Gilbert. I'm a newspaper man. I see by tonight's paper that you're in the running for Dr. Turner's place as chief of staff at the Edgemont Hospital. Well, I have it on pretty good authority that Dr. Robert Benson has got a fair chance of getting that job. Well, I've got just enough public spirit to keep him out of that appointment. I can prove that he's not the man for the place. But you must realize my position. I can't take any active interest in opposing him. That is, of course, unless you have positive proof. Oh, uh, I have proof, all right. Yes, in black and white. I can bring it over to the hospital and show it to you if you'd like. Very well. I'll be very glad to wait for you. Oh, just a moment. What did you say the name was? Oh, yes, Mr. Gilbert. Well, Mr. Gilbert, I'll be expecting you. Yes, sir. you picked this town and how you've been getting money. What are you talking about? Don't try to lie to me. I just read who lives in this town. And you've been holding them up. What do you think I do? Pass up a gold mine? You're going to give back every penny of that money or I'm going to call the cops. Uh, you wouldn't do that. Not with that prison record of yours. Now cut out the preaching. I know what I'm doing. You couldn't be honest if your life depended on it. Well, you're not going to get away with it. You've been getting money from the Wilsons and you're not going to go back there again. I've got somebody else besides the Wilsons. They ain't got enough dough. The man that wants these will pay plenty. Then we can get out of here. You pack those bags and be quick about it. Harry, will you listen to me? Ah, uh, you heard me. Basal skull fracture. I don't give you much chance. Take a look. Emergency operation might save him. Oh, for Dr. White. You sent for me? Yes. 
You're on duty in surgery tonight, aren't you? Well, that's right. Better get ready to operate. What is it? Traffic accident. There's one chance as an operation. This man couldn't survive an operation. He's too weak. We've got to take that chance. But what about his family? You've got to get their permission. That takes time. We can't wait. I agree with Dr. Benson. This man will die if we don't operate immediately. Of course, there's very little chance, but I think we should try it. I'm very sorry, gentlemen, but I disagree with you. The additional shock of the anesthetic and surgery is too risky. You mind if I take over? Not at all. I wish you luck. Personally, I think it's useless. Prepare him for surgery. Will you assist me, doctor? Be glad to. Time. Fifty-two minutes. Blunt forceps. Respiration weak, pulse fading. Retract it. Eighty-eight, dropping fast. Adrenaline. No use. It's too late. He's gone. Hard luck, old man. But I wouldn't feel too badly about it. How do you expect me to feel? The patient died. That was no fault of yours. You got here too late. It's too far gone. You did a perfect job. No one could have saved him. Well, what's this? The only thing we could find on that emergency case. Does this tell who he is? I didn't look. I'll take care of it. He just died in surgery. I just heard that your emergency patient died on the operating table. I thought you seemed pretty anxious to take that case. I wasn't trying to take any case away from you, Dr. White. I was merely taking the one chance the man might live. You remember I told you that the additional shock and surgery was too risky. Dr. Garfield agreed with me that the man would have died anyway. So you operated and made certain. Why would I do a thing like that? To get rid of him, of course. You knew who he was, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I knew who he was. I'd seen him But I wouldn't let him die. You'd every reason for finishing him off. Take a good look at these clippings. Here's one of the girl you're engaged to. Here's one of her mother, when she was going to be hanged for murder. And this is a story that shows your Miss Wilson was born in prison. Dr. White, you can't use these to, to harm Miss Wilson. That's for you to decide. There is a way to keep this quiet. All right. Let's hear it. I expect your resignation from the hospital. And if you don't get it? Then, when the board meets tomorrow, 
I should be compelled to place these facts before them. I promise, I only found out tonight that you lived in this town. Now, I know that my husband's been taking money from you. I don't know what he'll do next, but I'll do anything to stop him. I want to help you. Be sure to go to that young doctor you're going to marry. He's already been to Dr. Benson. Oh, I'm not engaged to him anymore. I know it's late, but I had to see you. There's something you should know. What is it? The man who was bothering you was in an accident. I did everything I could, but he was too far gone when they brought him in. He just died at the hospital. Now you'll have to tell his wife. She's in the living room. What's she doing here? She wants to help us. Help us? Mrs. Gilbert, Dr. Benson. And Mrs. Gilbert, there's, there's something that yes. I... I heard what you said. Now it can't hurt anybody anymore. I'm sorry for you. Please sit down. Oh, but he had those newspaper clippings with him. We can't let anyone see them. I've got to go to the hospital and get them. I'm afraid we're too late for that. Unfortunately, they were turned over to Dr. White, and he won't give them up. But he can use them against you. That's his idea. Unless I resign. Well, I'll see that he gives them up. They're not his, and he can't keep them. Now, you wait here, and I'll bring them back. I think it would be better if you waited until the morning and called at my office. This is something that can't wait. But it's not my practice to receive patients in my home. And you don't appear to be in urgent need of medical attention. I'm not here as a patient. My name is Betty Gilbert, Harry Gilbert's widow. Does that mean anything to you? Oh, yes, yes. I'm familiar with his case, Mrs. Gilbert. He died in surgery tonight. I'm terribly sorry. However, I'm not the doctor who operated on him. That isn't what I came to see about. I want some papers that my husband had with him when he left the house. Well, I wouldn't know about those. You better inquire at the hospital. I did. That's why I'm here. There's some newspaper clippings missing. I thought that you might know where they are. Now, what gave you that idea? I have reason to believe that my husband was on his way here to see you when the accident occurred. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about, Mrs. Gilbert. Possibly the shock of your husband's death has upset you. Now, if you'll, if you'll go home and rest, in the morning, I'll see that the hospital makes inquiries about your papers. That'll be too late. I must have those papers tonight, or I may be sent to jail. And the person who has them. Well, how could that happen? You must have known that my husband was a blackmailer. His game was to pick out a person like you to work his racket on. He had a set of fake newspaper clippings. And your kind of people would fall for them. Then, if they were fakes, there's nothing for you to be afraid of. Yes, there is. Part of it was true. You see, it was the old adoption gag. He knew that I was born in prison. The clipping showed that. He just used anybody's picture to fit the story. He worked it on a girl in this town named Margaret Wilson. The pictures didn't look anything like her. But if you give me those papers, I'll show you. But why, I... I never laid eyes on them. Now, I, I really must ask you to leave. Let's cut out the monkey talk. I came to get those papers and I want them. I'm not going to let you keep them to hurt anybody with. Now, are you going to give them to me or do I have to take them? Very well. They're in that portfolio. I don't understand how you induced Dr. White to give them up. Well, it wasn't easy. First, I told him that I knew he'd been dealing with my husband. Then I said that I was the one who'd been born in prison. My word for it. He'll never bother you again. I don't know how I can ever express my gratitude to you. Well, don't try. I was only paying a debt that I owe your mother. She was the one person in the world who was decent to me. All she ever asked was that you didn't have to pay for her mistakes. I was only trying to help. Now, I guess I'd better be on my way. What are you going to do about yourself? Well, can't you stay in town? We'll try to work out something for you. Well, thanks, that's very kind of you. But I've got it all figured out what's going to happen to me. It's not quite the way your mother expected, but I think she'll understand. Mr. 
Hello. Yes, he's here. Just a minute. Robert, you're wanted at the hospital. They say it's an emergency. Well, tell them to call another doctor. I can't handle it tonight. But you can't do that. Please take it. I can't do it tonight. It is not like you to refuse an emergency. They won't understand. I can't tell them you won't come. Maybe he's right. This may not be a case for him. Why do you say that? Ask them who it is. What difference would that make? Well, maybe I'm wrong, but ask them who it is. Dr. Benson is very busy tonight and would like to know who the patient is. They say it's Dr. White. That he's been shot and is dying. And they want you to operate. That's how you got the clippings. Then I can't operate. Not on him. But you can't just let him die. But there are other doctors. Don't you understand? If anything happens when I'm operating, they'll blame me. But you've got to do this one. Can't you see if he dies what they'll do to Mrs. Gilbert? They'll hold her for murder. And she was trying to help us. You must try to help him if you can. You don't have to do it for me. I didn't want to get you two into this. I didn't try to shoot him. It was an accident. Oh, please don't refuse. You must help him if you can. This is Dr. Benson speaking. What is the nature of the injury? What do the x-rays show? All right, prepare him for surgery. And call Dr. Garfield and Dr. Willard and tell them, please, that I want them to help me. And be sure to tell them that the patient is Dr. White. I know they'll assist me. I'll be right over. It's a brain operation. He has very little chance to live. I'll call you. If he does live, of course he'll tell all he knows. From the position of the bullet, it must have entered the vertical plate of the frontal bone at an angle of about 45 degrees. And is now resting in the anterior cortical area of the right cerebral hemisphere. Have you noticed here that the passage of the bullet indicates serious trouble? Yes, but only removal of the brain casing will show how serious. Doctor, do you think he could survive a few days without an operation to give him a chance to gain strength? His only chance is with immediate surgery. Then I advise we give him that chance. What do you say, Doctor? I say it'd be a miracle if he lives either way. However, that decision rests with Dr. Benson. He's the operating surgeon. Well, let's not wait any longer. Lee, go ahead with the anesthetic. Did you ever see the woman before? No, not until she came in demanding to see Dr. White. I told her he wasn't here. Then she wanted some papers we found on her husband. You know what the papers were? No, I didn't look at them. Did you give them to her? No, I told her Dr. White had them. She must have gone right over there and then shot him. It certainly looks like it. Is uh, Dr. White going to live? I don't know. He's been on the operating table more than an hour. I wonder why she shot him. I'll get all that when we find her. Are you sure this is her correct address? Yes, it's the one she gave me when I made her identify herself. Thanks a lot. Come on, Bill. Doctor, this is the finest surgical technique I ever witnessed. You better save your compliments. See if the man lives. If he pulls through it, he'll have you to thank for the rest of his life. If I ever need anything like that, I hope you're around to do the job. You're not freaking on anyone pulling a gun on you, are you? Well, you never know. I don't imagine that Dr. White expected it either. By the way, I suppose there'll be a hue and cry to find the one who shot him. What did you do with the bullet? The police will want it. The nurse has it. I wonder if they'll ever find out who did it. Dr. White must know who it is. But what I can't understand is what reason they'd have. Edgemont Taxi Cab Company? This is Betty Gilbert. Where's that taxi cab I ordered 20 minutes ago? Oh, he did? Well, it's about time. Yes? Yeah? Never mind. Here he is now. You must have expected me. I was expecting a taxi cab. You won't need a taxi cab. I'll drive you where you're going. Where's the gun? You mean yours? Come on. Well, 
Well, what's the big occasion? Dr. Benson is coming in to see you. How do you feel? Well, pretty good for a man who's had the top of his head removed. Strong enough to have visitors? The ones you talked about? Yes. The police want you to identify her. I'll have to prefer charges against her. That's what it would mean. I've been waiting for this. Then I'll have to explain why she shot me. Naturally. Did she make any explanation? She didn't say a word. She's outside? Yes. If she's the one, I'll know her. Want her in? What do you say, Doctor? I can't be certain. Better take a good look, Doctor. She's the kind of woman who would do it. Got a prison record and she's out in parole now. A past record has nothing to do with this. That bullet might have affected my memory. It may clear up later, if you care to wait for a month or a year, perhaps. I can't hold her any longer without preferring charges against her. Then I'm afraid I can't help you. If you change your mind, let me know. I didn't expect that from you. I was surprised when I woke up and found that you had done the surgery on me. Well, I guess I just forgot that you were the patient. Well, I've just forgotten something, too. Tell that girl I'll never remember. Thanks. Oh, Benson. I'll be needing a long vacation after this to resurrect my professional ethics that you reminded me about. And I'll be very glad when they make you chief of the hospital staff. You don't have to worry anymore. He doesn't want to ever remember anything about it. I'm so glad for you. Now, what about you two? I don't think I'm going to have any more trouble with this one. No. There is something you can do for us. Yes. Help us get married. Your mother would have liked that.